Now say what you want about Bioware, EA and all of the games and titles coming out of the studios and the publisher at the moment which have missed the mark in many ways, Anthem had a lot to live up to and by god it's a good looking game. You cannot argue this is one of the best looking open world end or open ended games you we've seen on these consoles. Yes this is the Xbox One X 4K version. And it does look absolutely beautiful. There's all the obvious cutbacks and sacrifices and all the optimization work you'd expect on a console game. The foliage doesn't move that much, doesn't react to you very much. There isn't a lot of movement. The skybox is quite flat. There's not a lot of volumetric clouds. All of those elements. But you know what? It, it isn't designed for that. We don't spend all of our time staring into space. Well, m most of us anyway. No, it's clearly evident they have sacrificed and made the cutbacks in all the right areas for a beautiful looking game. And it's even better inside those city safe walls. If you're interested just how it compares to the original Veal, then check my other video on that. But what is impressive is just how sharp, clean and beautifully put together the whole game is. Animation wise, detail wise, contextual, the combat is really fluid. Harking back a little bit to me with that Lost Planet feel, lots of motion blur, per object motion blur, depth of field, beautiful particle systems, it's evident this game is a frostbite engine game and the Bioware team have really used it well, creating a game with a strong identity, bright stylish artistic design and it really feels something fresh and different, obviously there's been a lot of links to Destiny, it doesn't feel anything like Destiny at all to me, it's very bright and not as dark and moody, in fact the one thing I do feel it feels and takes much inspiration from is Iron Man. These suits, these javelins are clearly based on Iron Man, even down to the voice which sounds very familiar to the one in the film and that's not a bad thing at all. There should be an arcade vault around here, let's check it out. Let's be honest, we'd all like to jump around in an Iron Man suit, it really does the job. And this game gives you that feeling, in fact, I can just imagine this team making an Iron Man game, that would be impressive. Then again, I'm probably not that happy thinking about it, that EA would take another big license and crush it underfoot. You were the chosen one! It was said that you would destroy this and not join them! so possibly not but certainly the engine the team and all the design aims here would make a very impressive Iron Man game but it does have that open-ended feel and like I say you could spend hours just wandering around this world all the wildlife and I'm sure as we've seen in earlier demos that the huge creatures that appear and sit somewhere out in this wide open wilderness the flying mechanism and the combat mechanism is seamless and fluid and it really feels exceptionally good to play and that's a big part so on the Xbox One and the Xbox One S, which I covered on, I didn't unfortunately get a chance to play on the PS4, the PS4 Pro and the PC. This was gifted to me from one of my friends on Twitter, so thank you very much, Rocket Punch, a fellow motorcycle fan. It's always good to see. He gave me his code and I managed to get signed into both the Xbox versions, but I couldn't use the same VIP code on other machines. It kept saying that I needed to gain another access, so maybe it was only limited, but I will be covering the full versions when the full open demo comes out in next week, and I believe it's going to be pretty much the same version as this they might release a patch to update some of it which there's certainly elements there that need to be done so what about the numbers on those consoles let's get those important figures out of the way the xbox one s version here targets 1600 by 900 with a form of reconstruction elements in there but it looks pretty much like a standard 900p title the temporal aa element is very very soft indeed and it doesn't really affect the image quality like other titles that you cover with a strong taa there might be in fact it looks like there is a sharpening filter on the texture materials here so that's probably helping the image quality and it looks very sharp and clean on a 1080p display again 4k is out of the question unless you want to notice all these breakups and shimmer that can happen in fact the lack of taa on many parts of the pixel image does make me think that they have sacrificed that quite strong here and actually rely more on the per object motion blur which has a quite low sample rate on both versions ever so slightly better on the xbox one s in terms of the the temporal crush that goes on with that lower resolution you can notice it slightly more on the x due to the higher resolution but i think the taps are pretty much the same if not identical on both it's just that it stands out slightly more on the high resolution x version the x itself runs a 4k image 3840 by 2160 just like they showed us way back in the reveal which wasn't running on the console like i said at the time i know many people were saying it was but it was clearly evident that it wasn't this demo proves that that wasn't 
wasn't running on an Xbox One X because something went completely wrong downhill if they managed to release this version almost two years later and not actually run as well as that version. But yes, 3840 by 2160 with again clear signs of checkerboard rendering running here. You can see obvious breakup on geometry edges and also incorporated into the post processing suite. So that covers everything from motion blur, bloom, depth of field, the voxel based volumetric lighting or cloud system that's sitting in various parts of the game when you get breaking light beaming through giving that volume look to certain distant objects and even the atmospheric scattering in certain parts of the wider area which looks beautiful and great when you're playing the game but this checkerboard solution is actually very impressive and it looks very clean you can't really notice it in action when you're playing the game it looks sharp it looks crisp and it does look like a native 4k image i'm sure the final pc version at 4k will show discrepancies between the two images but that's not what this is about the solution here is designed to reduce the load on the gpu and give you a much cleaner and sharper image output and it ticks that box and it ticks that box massively here well maybe not so much on the performance but we'll come to that in a moment but looking at the visual quality it is 4k it is checkerboard there's no difference there and they have really delivered on that visual quality overall like i say i have covered the game and comparing it to the original so i'm not going to dwell into that here there are some beautiful touches in the game it does use adaptive based tessellation as most frostbite engines do so you can see the ground adaptively tessellating it uses pom i think in certain areas as well but i would need more time uh, i did have very many issues with the game i spent a long time looking at this screen um it loaded at one point i left it for an hour i'm not joking for an hour i went away and came back and it was still on the screen so there was many points where i couldn't get into a game and i had limited time i always have limited time with things that i do because this is a part-time gig so i had to capture what i could and play what i could so I know it was widely spread, the issues logging into the game. It is a VIP demo. They should have called this a, a beta or a beta. It's, that's what it is. It clearly is because of all the issues that were going on. But I'm sure some of those will be rectified at the final launch date. But we can't keep relying on the fact that it will all be fixed on day of release. Because as we know, as I've covered since I started my channel in many, many times, launch code isn't as final as it once used to be. And certainly when you're basing your entire game on online proportions, online servers and those remote connections, then there's even bigger reliance on delivering that on the day you launch it to the public. This was obviously a demo behind closed doors for people that pre-ordered it and it should have been delivering more. Those are the nice touches with the water effects using a shader based solution to give ripples and effects as you shoot. Unfortunately, it does react to objects and other characters in the game and a level amount of destruction, but it doesn't react to your bullet shot. So, like I said at the beginning of the video, there's some obvious limitations and cutbacks here, optimization work to keep the load low on both the GPU and the CPU for every console combined. If this was designed just around the Xbox One X, then possibly some of those features could be improved even more. We'll have to wait and see what's delivered on the final PC version. But aside the standard improvement things like uh, screen space reflections, ambient occlusion, resolution and obviously frame rate, I don't see there being a drastic change on PC other than obviously a full native 4K as well. You can see that it's a great looking title. The character design, the models and the geometry are very high. The animation is of high quality as always with lots of subtle touches on the reload and the shooting and the texture detail in the background, the material detail almost looks like a matte painting or matte painting from many years ago. So i am not got any grumbles with the visual style and the presentation here. Anyone that thinks this is a bad looking game needs their eyes tested, that is for sure. Well, it's a good start to it and it looks great on the Xbox One. I'm sure the PS4 will be 1080p and I'm sure the PS4 Pro will be around 1620 or 1800p checkerboard rendering. That's kind of the level that I've come to expect of the hardware and the solutions in place here on the Frostbite engine. So I'll confirm that once I get hands on with those two versions. Unfortunately, I didn't have that choice here. Moving in to the final issue on both machines at this point and that is performance. Unfortunately, it isn't great. In fact, it's terrible. I'm not going to lie. So one of the first things they should do is employ an adaptive V-Sync in the game to allow it to tear at the top section of the screen. It's fully V-Synced at the moment. And that would give a little bit of leeway in terms of performance, both on the Xbox One S, which is slightly worse than the Xbox One X, but the Xbox One X is not great either. Um, but it would give maybe a little bit of performance back to the game, improve controller response, improve visual response, and improve the quality of the game overall. Because right now, it struggles to hold 30 FPS. 
FPS. In fact, it just doesn't. It doesn't hold 30 FPS on both machines in any consistent manner. It's better on the inside of the building when you're not out, but all the issues point to things like optimization in this game not being quite ready for public consumption just yet. There's obvious things here like streaming assets, the memory bandwidth limitations, the memory size and the footprint on the Xbox One S. All those things give you clear signs here on the side-by-side -side comparisons internally where it's suffering more. And on top of all this, because it uses a double buffered V-Sync, you're seeing skips into 16 milliseconds, 33 and 50 milliseconds, which makes it even worse and inconsistent when you play the game. You can feel this stuttering and juddering. You can see an example here of here on the Xbox One S playing the game. In combat, it regularly dips down to the, the low 25s. That's not the most important part. The most important part is it's inconsistently skipping between 33 milliseconds and 50 milliseconds, which has occasional spikes to 16 milliseconds. And that just doesn't feel good to play. And you can see, especially on lateral movement as you're moving left and right, that's where it's most obvious, spinning around and flying. It can also have longer hangs when you're spinning around and motion blur kick in. And these all point to things like memory issues, loading assets in, or even CPU issues. Maybe not directly GPU. They are certainly, it's a GPU heavily bound title. But there's a combination of issues here, which I don't all sit behind the fact that the GPU is being overly stressed on what it's presenting on the screen. But you you can see the fact that it seesaws up and down then you get some small points where it can lock to 20 fps due to that like i say double buffered v-sync in the title which gives a little bit of a weakness in the overall presentation now the xbox one x is better um and don't get me wrong the game looks beautiful the particle system the lighting the dynamic action all the enemies on screen the explosions everything feels chaotic the weapons are a little weak i think your superpowers in the machines are much better um so hopefully you can ramp those up in the final game and i'm looking for to play more of it next week across all versions and cover the game in more depth and that'll be very interesting because i think there's a lot of potential here but certainly performance wise it doesn't quite hit that target which it consistently does on the xbox one s and it also does the same thing on the xbox one x so if you are looking at the moment for a locked 30 fps title with smooth consistent performance we are simply not seeing it here. There could be a quick win here on the Xbox One X at least and possibly the PS4 Pro which is likely to be suffering in the same way as this version here and the PS4 obviously is drop the resolution down to a 1080p mode to push performance high. I'm not talking 60 FPS at this point, I'm talking 30 FPS, but it might stop some of the dips and judder that we're seeing consistently across the board. The Xbox One X is a more consistent game overall than the Xbox One S. You can see that in the side-by-side -side comparisons and the analysis on the average frame rate. Again, information in the description below, but you can see the visual quality is very high. Texture detail, asset quality, density of world, character models, animation, everything is very very good and it feels brilliant like I say but it just needs to tick that box on performance because this is essentially where you spend all your time and it can be really cumbersome when you're spinning the camera around trying to get away from battle or aim on characters and you're just presented with these random frame rates which affect the performance no matter if you're flying walking shooting or just staring at the beautiful scenery it doesn't perform as well as hoped so these are the areas i hope they can fix and resolve in the final release but we'll see what the demo next week and any patches that come with that version as allegedly this is a few week old version so there might be some improvements to come anyway that's it i hope you guys and girls enjoyed this look at anthem one of the big titles on xbox one and multi-platform later this year if you like this or anything else put together, please like, subscribe and share where appropriate and check out my comparison with the original reveal to see just if Anthem lives up to the expectations that were set back then by EA. But I'll catch you on the next one.